locally sourced. I'm Armanda Famoletti. Tonight, my guests are local candidates who are running for Southeast Town Board. Let's find out who they are, why they're running, and why you should vote for them. Welcome, Lynn Eckhart. Hi, nice to see you. And Zachary Dizador. Hi. So great to have you two here. Um, I'm going to start interviewing Lynn first, but before I do, I have to clear something up. I just want to uh, ask you two if you are radical socialists. I am such a boring moderate. You're going to probably be asleep before we finish the show. Okay, good I'm to very, hear. Very, very moderate. Zach? Uh, I, I, am, I am not a radical socialist. Okay, because there is a line out there that everyone who's a Democrat is actually a, a radical socialist. And certainly everyone who's running for office is a radical socialist. Right. Uh, believe me, that is true. I watch enough TV to to see that that's true. So let's just, that's a lie. That's a lie, folks. I know lots and lots of Democrats. Now, one of them is even a social, never mind a radical socialist. Okay, Lynn, so let's start with you. Sure. You're, a, you're a veteran. Um, <laughs> yes, State person, politician. Uh, uh, you've been in office for almost eight years. Correct. Um, and you are on the town board yes. currently, the Southeast Town Board. So why are you running again? Aren't you pooped? Um, no, not at all. I'm more energized, I think. I love my job. I love my constituents. Southeast is, uh, in my opinion, of course, the best place to live in Putnam County and practically anywhere. I live here totally by choice. Um, so I think there's a lot more to be done. Um, and I think, frankly, uh, if, any, if I fell short on anything, it would be on vision and working towards the future because I think we're going to see major changes. I've been very fiscally conservative. There's a lot I've done. But there's a lot to be done, and I think we need to look forward. We have a, a very, I think we have an excellent town board right now, but I think Zach would make a wonderful addition, so. Okay, um, so let's talk about things you really know what's going on in Southeast. And one of the, the things that gets a lot of play um, in the news, and I guess the town board meetings, is the logi uh, Northeast Logistics Proposal. So tell us about what that is and um, where does it stand now? Well, the name has changed okay. um, to the commercial campus. I mean, it's, it's so it's, a lot of people think it's th through the process and approved. It is not. It has not been approved by the planning board, which will be its first stop, and it will come to the town board for additional approvals, um, some of which, um, you know, I, I'm a bit restricted by what I can say um, because I have to hear everything um, from both my constituents and from the applicant before we can get into that. Basically, the town board, what our approvals will be is a special permit for them to open a logistics center. Um, and then we have to approve a pilot program, which would be giving them a tax break. Um, the one thing I can mm -hmm. say is we also will have to approve a sale of uh, not a sale, we would have to give them a, ro a, a road that has been, I won't say abandoned, but it hasn't been used in years. Um, I can tell you, and I've been very open about this, that I will not give away a town asset, um, and uh, nor will I gouge an applicant, but they would have to pay fair market value for that. So I think people who are very involved in this, whether they're, um, whether they're for the Logistics Center or whether they're against, um, have a lot of time left to make their opinions mm -hmm. known. And I, I really love hearing from them. I think okay. it's really important. So tell me a little bit, for people who don't know what a logistics center entails, it's, what does a logistics center <laughs> it, it, entail? A logistics center is a $10 word for warehouse. So oh, you should be aware okay. of that's what it there is. We go. Um, well, part of the problems, I think, um, is there will, be, there will be up to 600 jobs, which sounds wonderful, but the jobs will pay um, will average out about $35,000 a year, which is not a sustainable wage for our area. So I do have concerns. Um, I, I think all jobs, jobs have dignity, and I think it's fa fantastic to offer employment, but I don't think um, in this case that uh, the pros outweigh the cons as far as um, that goes, mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the traffic that it'll generate, which is massive. And it does change the landscape, it will be seen. Um, on our ridge tops, our ridge lines. Ooh, I don't like that. Not, not as much as, I, I will give the applicant credit, they have modified that as much as they can, but um, I'm very big on protecting our landscape in Southeast. Okay. I, and I think it protects our property values. Yes, I think it does too, because yeah. on that same, it's a, it's was uh, Route 6, right? That it would be the, the main uh, Well, road they would be, no, they will be up on Pugsley Road, very close, to, uh, right off 312 and close to um, Route 84. But it will change traffic throughout the area. Okay. There's no question right. because, because there are 250 truck trips a day minimally, and oh. and it's almost a million square feet. I mean, it's a very, very it's the largest project Southeast has seen 
um, certainly, uh, I've, uh, well, for at least 20 years, probably longer. Would we get our Amazon packages sooner? Um, I don't think so. I don't, they have no specific tenants yet either. So we really don't know um, if, you know, they'll build to suit, I think, or sell. Um, but we don't know what we're getting yet. Okay, so this is really sort of years down the road, so to speak. I would say minimally a year. The The rumor that's out is that they're waiting till after the election to see what the town board makeup is, and that could or may or may not be true. Um, they haven't finished the final environmental impact statement. And um, see, I'm pretty sure I can put you to sleep. But um, <laughs> th but they will be yep. uh, finishing that up soon and will be deliberate. The, the, uh, I make it a point to go to all planning board meetings because I think um, development is so important for any town mm -hmm. and your quality of life. Okay, so, so it, I assume that that's a question that you get a lot from your constituents, like what's going on with that? And so I you, do. you have to be right on top of what's going on with that. Okay. I, think, I think that's part of my job. Yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> All right, well, I'm glad you take your job so seriously, uh, uh, Lynn. Uh, and speaking of serious, we're going to go to something that's really sober and serious, which is the um, Out of Alignment report yes. that came from Patterns for Progress early October. Um, it was a very sobering report. It looked at the region and specifically in uh, Putnam County said some things like um, that we were going to have a financial crisis in the next few years if things don't change. Um, can you tell me your reaction to that report? And Well, that's why in the beginning of this interview I spoke about how important I think it is for us to be visionary and look ahead. Um, our school populations are declining, but in fact, patterns, uh, Pattern for Progress feels that the cost per student will be astronomical and will really make our taxes rise further. Um, our populations are not going to increase much, but um, our ages, our age and affordability and all of that is going to increase. And in point of fact, our median income has actually dropped. Can I interrupt yes, you for a minute? You said our age, you mean the we general age be, of the population? Yes, we'll, yes, okay. yes. Not the age of the students. So uh, no, no, our se <laughs> excuse me, our senior population is okay. going to be much larger, which does strain, um, you know, our finances mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. everything. I'm sorry so. to interrupt. No, no, it's okay. It's just, um, you know, I, if you have a specific question, I mean, it's, it's, our, uh, affordability is a big issue in our region, and I don't think we've been looking at it in the right way. Um, I think repurposing older buildings sometimes is better than building new. For example, um, if the re revitalization of the village takes place, it will add so many new uh, apartments and spaces, which sounds wonderful, but how much will, will that, in fact, if are we going to increase our student population? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned revitalization of the village. Can yes. you, what is, what, that's a, there that is master a master plan for Brewster? For just the village, the town. Um, our job will not be to oversee that mm -hmm. at all. We certainly have input as residents and citizens, and everybody does. Um, but uh, it's been in the process now at least five years, so um, it seems a little bit, they, it seems a little stagnant right now, so we'll mm -hmm. have to see where it goes. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't care for the project, um, but I, I know everyone's really looking forward to some revitalization, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but high rises. I, I, I don't think people come just because you build, build housing. I think if there were a hook like sustainability and if you could own an apartment and your utility bills could be almost nothing because of solar or wind, um, and I think that would put the village on the map aside from a transit hub, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, that, that's the type of thing that really appeals to me a little mm -hmm. bit more than just building a high rise. Right, so um, let's talk about taxes, because taxes is, are on everybody's minds, right? Um, the taxes that seem to be the most onerous are school taxes and uh, property taxes. Um, tell me about, do you have any solutions for how we can um, maybe, you know, they only seem to go up, but they never seem to go down. Right. We've been, um, we've been uh, religious in the town about um, your taxes in Southeast have gone out. We're still the lowest tax municipality in Putnam. Um, we keep within the tax cap, but we do take, um, uh, we do take the tax cap to the limit usually mm -hmm. because, for example, it's a, if it's a 2% this year, I know our medical costs went up almost 5%, our medical insurance and everything. So um, we need, this way I think is much better than 0005% because mm -hmm. this way our seniors and young families can plan a lot better. Um, and I think that's, a re mm -hmm. that's really important. I think if we're serious about reducing taxes and we get into the vision thing again, if we're really serious, we need to consider regional schools, which will not be my job, but my job would be government consolidation. Um, I frankly don't think, I know this is heretical, and I'm, I apologize, 
but I don't think um, we need county government. Um, I would love to see us go, uh, we could do all a county government or we could do town government, but having both is redundant and mm -hmm. really isn't necessary today at all. I know Connecticut um, does without county government. And it's not just because I'm in, I gladly give up my position right, right. for lower taxes for people. So tell me, do, are there any counties that don't have county government in New York State? N uh, they have different ways of running. Um, so it's a really good question. The old way to do it, and what Putnam was till r relatively recently, was a board of supervisors, so that mm -hmm. every town has a representative in their supervisor. Um, I think it's a more economical right. way to run a county, and can and can easily be done. So. so I know you've been around a long time, Lynn. Do you remember what the um, rationale was? Was going from the the supervisors to the county legislature? I don't remember the rationale, except for I think I I believe they felt the county well the county was the fastest growing county in New York State for two decades, um, at least two and maybe three. So my guess would have would be back then that they thought it would be efficient and it was necessary. Um, I just think um, things course, have changed. Things change. And yes. I think things have changed so much with electronic communications and all that. Um, it's not the same as it used to be, and we it, we really need to look at that. Mm -hmm. And and of course, another way um, of saving taxes, in my opinion, would be sales tax. Um, we're one of the very few counties in New York State that doesn't share sales tax with its municipalities. Um, I would love to get my hands on that money. However, I think it would be better to rebate that t directly to the public and cut our sales tax rate. And I think with internet sales tax, it's really possible. Mm -hmm. So even if it's reduced to half a percent, that would put us at an advantage if people really want to shop Putnam. Right, right. So I know. I do want to shop Putnam, and I live very close to Connecticut. I know, so me too. So it's, you know, you got to balance your checkbook. Right. Um, so um, uh, anyways, there are just uh, a little uh, more time I want to ask you about. Um, we, when we were talking before the show, you said, and you just mentioned reason, regionalizing schools. Can you talk, a, I, you gave me an example of, an, of, a, of sure. Massachusetts doing that and saving a lot of money. In yes, and, I, and I'm not sure how, um, this is beyond my area of expertise. I want to say right away, we, this would we have be. a minute for this. Okay, this would, <laughs> no, but this would be for the school board uh, boards to decide. But um, up in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, they regionalize their schools and th their taxes are, I think their school taxes are just about half of what ours are. And th um, I, I think it can be done. And mm -hmm. I, I think minimally, all of this thing, all of these things we need to explore. And we should never be ex afraid of looking mm -hmm. into things, even if they're a failure. I think mm -hmm. it's really important. That's what your government okay. should be so doing. So you're talking tax Massachusetts there, right? Yes, and they're but doing it's, yes, yes. much better than we're doing. I think, I, yes. And I think their schools are pretty good. So, so Lynn, in about 30 seconds, I want you to look into that camera. This and, one? Yes, okay. and tell people in Southeast why they should re-elect you. Um, I would love to be re-elected because I really care about all my constituents. I think um, nonpartisan government is so very important. I work very well with... Um, our board right now is three Republicans and two Democrats. I would love to see Zach elected, but I don't think at the local level it really has anything to do with party. I think it has everything to do with hard work. So I'm hoping to be reelected, and I want to thank you for your time. This has been really a pleasure. Oh, it's my pleasure, Lynn. So thank thanks. you. I just want to take this moment to remind people that in New York today we have early voting. And that means that there's no excuse. You got to get out and vote in this election because you can start voting on October 26th just by going to the Putnam County Board of Elections right here in Old Route 6 in Carmel. It starts on the 26th, which is a Saturday, and I'm going to be out voting on the 26th because I want to vote on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it runs through November 3rd, so um, it's, it's going to be really easy. And then if for some reason you can't vote between the 26th and the 3rd, vote on November 5th, which is voting day throughout New York State. So I just wanted to put that out there. Zach, I'm going to move on to you. Unlike Lynn, you're kind of a newbie at politics and running for office. So um, why are you putting yourself out there to do this? And what are your qualifications? Well, I think right now, you know, it's, it's funny I've been called like a, a young candidate. Um, I, I guess 33 is young. Um, I, I think in, in tying into what Lynn's saying, as a lifelong resident of the Southeast, we have to be interested in our government. It's, it's on all of us to have the vision for what's gonna come next. Um, I, I read that Patterns for Progress and it, it frankly scared me. I, I hope, and I, I, having lived in Southeast forever, just I know what it can be and I do think it's the best town of all the towns there are. 
Um, and I want to see it continue that way. So it, it is a first time out, but I, I think it's important that all of us get involved in local government because there's so much excitement at the, uh, the federal level now, which is great to see, but it's at every level of government we need to be be involved and interested and excited. You can make the, the case, I think local government is very, very important and it sort of trickles up as far as, you know, um, a lot of our political uh, uh, systems go. Absolutely. Um, so what are your qualifications? What, what have you done to prepare yourself for this position? Uh, well, um, basically for 15 years I've worked over at um, the Arc of Putnam, New York, or Putnam ARC, or the Arc Mid Hudson now, but I've worked with the physically and mentally handicapped. So I run respite programs there. Uh, I've worked um, with local and state governments basically to secure fundings for programs. I've worked with school boards. I attend all their meetings. Um, basically, people trust me with the um, person in their life that needs the most help and support. And for 15 years, I've been able to provide that. It's really my, my passion in life is, is working with the disabled and through that I've been able to lobby at the state level for better pay for um, the staff that work there who are grossly underpaid mm -hmm. I have to say. Um, we are dealing with a, actually a period of consolidation now um, at the state level for all of our service agencies which should as we get through this kind of time of fat cutting could mean for better staffing for the individuals that we serve. and. Uh, just better staff and programs overall. So I've dealt with that and I've dealt with um, a, a lot of areas of government that are not always the most uh, visible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you a grant writer or are you? I have participated in writing grants, yes. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a grant writer solely, but I've uh, joined in on grants. Right. With, it's a uh, complicated process. Very. Um, how is Southeast doing with their um, asking for grants from the various sources they could get them? Um, I honestly, I can't speak fully intelligently on them. I'm sure that Lynn could more. I don't want to say that we're you're good or bad. Or good, <laughs> good, good or bad. Um, yeah, than than uh, any other municipality. Uh, I am very interested in some climate smart solutions and and that grant. That'd be something I'd be more than willing to, if on the board, work with. Right. To. So is Southeast now a climate smart town? I don't believe as of yet it is. And okay. No. But you'd like it to be because that opens the door to more grants for the town. Absolutely, right? okay. absolutely. And how, who's pushing for that? Both of you, or um? I can only speak for myself uh, right now, and I'd say that that, that is something, something you're going to push for, and Lynn. I, um, I can tell you that I am not pushing for this until and unless we have someone who's going to be in charge and really do the work. I think. It's really disingenuous to just say we're a climate smart community right. and not be. I really, okay. this would be a really good thing to tackle. That's been a cri criticism of the countywide yes. uh, climate smart initiative, right? That yes. they, they passed it and then kind of sat back. Right. But they've answered that, haven't they? They have they appointed have, there was, someone. There was, at, there was a protest at the courthouse, and um, I don't know whether that made them more responsive, but they have been. But I will not. I, I, in, under my watch, I want it to be really uh, something that proceeds, not something mm -hmm. that just. Okay. You thank, know, thank just, you for clarifying. Sorry. Lynn. Yeah. No. no absolutely. <laughs> please. Please. So, so we're back to you. So um, Lynn mentioned it when when I was interviewing her about um, what's happening in Brewster, and um, I'm confused by Brewster. We talked about this a little bit. Brewster is a village, has its own mayor. Is Brewster part of Southeast? Um, do the Southeast folks have a say on the revitalization plan? Brewster got a grant for that revitalization plan. Can you kind of clear that up for us? Uh? Sure, as, as best I can, I will say that Brewster is definitely a part of Southeast, but there are two separate municipalities. So there is the village of Brewster, which has its own board, um, and, and that's where the mayor is. Uh, they have their own revitalization plan for the village itself. Um, the Southeast Town Council that me and Lynn are running for, we, we would know about it, we'd be involved with the zoning mm -hmm. boards and all of that, but we, we can't say what or speak to what You don't have be. a vote in what happens no. there? No. Okay. Um, would you, do you have a, a voice to advise or um, you're just a you're just sort of sitting back as an observer, so you're fully informed about the constituents in Southeast. Yes, it would be more of the sitting back as an observer. We we can't uh, affect what the an, another board does. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so I just want to ask you about um, uh, any priorities that mesh with Lens or that you have uh, that you've been thinking about on your own. Well, I for a tank for uh, Southeast. Indefinitely, with meshing with Lynn is the the keeping below the three percent um, tax. That's really important for for residents, and it's really important, you know, as um, a person who lucked into a house within the town, uh, because my my uncle's taking care of my grandmother, so I I now have his house. I would like to live within the town, you know, hopefully forever. Uh, so. I, I would really like to do that affordably. And I think that the, the taxes are something that, that's very important. And when I've been out door knocking and canvassing, that's something that I hear. Uh, Southeast is the lowest uh, taxed, uh, the lowest taxed town within the county. And I'd like, like to keep mm-hmm. it that way. Um, I believe infrastructure is very, very important. So um, we are getting a new uh, highway supervisor I would like us to work with them to make sure that our roads are good. That's another thing that in, in doing this for a first time and canvassing and meeting the voters, that's what I hear most. Infrastructure, taxes, that's what matters. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a, a third thing for me was, you know, we've already touched upon the, the climate smart uh, community. Uh, I, I think that green is the future for jobs and in, in reading those, um, the talking points from the uh, the pathways or is was the pathways patterns, pa- patterns, patterns for progress. Patterns for progress is a it's a think tank up in Poughkeepsie, and the name of the report is out of alignment, and it can be downloaded for free, uh, and summarized on their website. I would recommend everyone check that out because reading it was pretty sobering. And yeah, very depressing. <laughs> very very depressing. <laughs> so um, I, I hope for that just to be the 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 nightmare uh, situation that we can avoid. That we can avoid. It, it doesn't have to be that way, and I hope to work with Lynn and, and the board to ensure that it isn't. Um, you know, finally, I, I don't want to touch on this too much, but um, in, in doing what, what I do with the disabled every day, I would like to make sure that our, our town does everything that it can to maintain positive inclusion of those individuals within our community so it's more part of the community instead of just Mm-hmm. on the outskirts of society. I, I think that Southeast has always done very well with that, but we can always do better and mm-hmm. always push so more can inclusion. So can you give me an example specifically of what that would look like? Well, absolutely. Um, recently, sheltered workshops have closed. So sheltered workshops were um, intellectually disabled people were put into sheltered workshops and would work for a living wage. It was really important to them. Uh, within the past five years, they've closed. That, that's kind of envelope stuffing, or what, envelope what stuffing, were they doing? You know, we, we worked with Brewster Plastics for a number of years, and some of their work actually went up on the space shuttle. So wow. this was really prideful and impactful work for people who could not always get the traditional job. As we know, also automation is removing a lot of jobs out mm-hmm. in the community, so it's hard for, for people to get jobs, you know, quote unquote, mm-hmm. neurotypical or normal. If we could work with local business owners, um, maybe town and village spaces to bring in cleaning crews, um, to provide work, uh, valuable work for the individuals to replace that. Because right now, some are in day habits, some are staying home. So that piece of their life that- That, mm. that, that brought them pride and- That brings you know. what brings us all pride and in income meeting, <laughs> and, and income absolutely relied upon income there's a void there so i would love to do everything that i can if elected mm-hmm. to make sure that that need is met mm-hmm. so that, that that's a that's a big so that's important that you're bringing that perspective to serving on the town board did you ever imagine that you were going to be running for office at some point or never never <laughs> never so something must have triggered this um this feeling that I've got to run. There, were, there was a couple of things. Um, there was a report in the New York Times that I read just after the, the blue wave. And it was speaking how Putnam was kind of a, a immune to the blue wave. And, and we were an, uh, a, a red island. island among a sea of blue. And, and I, I read that, but I didn't feel it because I also saw that there's, there's a lot of people around me who think the same way, who feel the same way. So I sent an email out to the, 
you know, the county commissioner just said, what can I do? And I thought that was going to be maybe door knocking, envelope stuffing, that sort of thing. The county commissioner of who, what? Um, of, um, the, <laughs> Of uh, getting the, the, people the, to run. Who actually, is that? I, I meant to, I misspoke. I meant to say the, the town chair of the Democratic uh, Oh, committee. okay. There, okay. Was, there was a <laughs> website I went through, and of course, I think it was Future Leadership or some, some, some such like right, that, right. and it had the listings, because I honestly didn't know where to go. Right. The young Dems of Putnam County or something? They're very active. They're, they're very active and very new, and that was the first meeting I attended. Um, uh, Kathy Croft was the name of the. Uh, the oh, woman who, okay, right. So she's the Board of Elections Commissioner yes. who represents the Democrats, and Mr. Skenna Pieco represents the Republicans. Right. Okay. So we sat down, we met, and she, you know, introduced me to a couple of groups. I started attending meetings, and here and we are. And they roped you in. <laughs> they roped me in. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm so glad that they did because I think you're an excellent candidate, and we need 33 year olds. Mm -hmm as much as we need, um, you know, 40-year-olds. So, <laughs> right? Thanks, Armanda. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so we have about 30 seconds. Can you look in the camera and tell the voters of um, Southeast why they should, um, between October 26th, November 3rd, and if they can't make it, November 5th, vote for you? Okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to sell myself, but I have to say I... I'm a hard worker, first and foremost. I'm not a politician uh, naturally. This is all new to me, but I believe in what we're doing, and I believe in Southeast, and I think that I can be a voice to help in that. I just want to take a little bit of my time and say, please vote for me. That would be great, but you need to vote for Lynn because <laughs> Lynn is the is, is a driving force, and I'm I'm honored for the first time to be running to be running with somebody so so wonderful. Okay, you must be the humblest politician, yes. certainly in Putnam County, yes. and maybe all of the United States. <laughs> and I want to thank you very much, Zach. I hope you stay in politics. I hope you get elected, and um, I think you'd be great on the Southeast Town Board with Lynn. So thanks very much, and Lynn. I mean the. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the goddess of Southeast Town uh, Board, really, way. wouldn't you say? And of course, um, I wish you the best of luck and Thank keep you. on going, keep on, uh, keep it on. Well, um, thanks for doing your show and thanks to the crew too. They were all so nice. Aren't they? And yes, it made Thank me you. feel much more relaxed and than I ever thought. They're so. all volunteers. You know, they come out, they spend like their whole morning here now. They and didn't that, make faces or anything. No, the 4-H <laughs> Media Club is with us today, so we really want to thank them. They didn't they have school, fantastic. so they came in and gave up their morning when they don't have school to come in and crew. And then we have our, you know, volunteer crew members who come all the time and are fantastic. so loyal. And the yeah. viewers who watch, I want to thank you, of course, very much as well. And what, what do I want to say to you before we leave? Go out and vote. <laughs>